Video games. What up, dudes, and welcome back to the Overdue Games Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Andrew. And once again, thank you to all our generous patrons who've kept us going for over 400 episodes. Yeah, if you're interested in becoming a patron at any level, please check out patreon.com slash Podcast. Dude of the week is six. He's a longtime dude. Thank you so much for sticking with us. So I, uh, I we've said this before, but I, I guess we could say it as a definitive now. Yeah. Um, you know, we've we've hinted at it. We've we've talked around exclusivity is dead exclusivity is dead it's not even just us saying it i'm gonna be either a heel or a hero depending on your point of view on this are me so mad (laughs) they are they are but i really want the people who are mad to sit back and say like what are you mad about why why does what i say why is what i'm going to basically be saying this episode is why does this make you mad if it makes you mad you know or why are you different why are you defending the multi-billion dollar corporation. Now that all those guys have turned it off, <laughs> because they're just not going to listen. Uh, no, yeah, I, I think that's a good point. I think fandom is really the biggest argument people have in favor of exclusives right now. Now, granted, Which is there's all the more reason to get rid of it because fandoms ruin everything. Well, there, it's sort of true, sadly. Um, no, there, there is an argument that uh, it's sort of the big brain argument that sounds smart when you say it in casual conversation. Like everybody has that that fallback, like, oh, well, you know, one hand in your pocket, you're at a party, you don't actually want to get into it, but here's this one thing that you heard. And that argument for exclusivity is that, like, why would somebody buy a playstation if playstation doesn't have exclusive games and the answer is because playstation gives you a 500 hundred dollar pc or gaming rig a high performing one for cheaper than you'd be able to get a pc that could do this right it's it's convenience and luxury yeah. um and I, and I had someone even today who was trying to argue i don't you know about like how like how it costs these companies, you know, thousands, you know, all this R and D money to make these consoles. So it's not just, it's not just a simple luxury. I'm like, you know, oh, poor, poor Sony, poor Microsoft, yeah. you know, poor, poor R and D departments getting a ton of my foot. <clears throat> silly argument. Uh, point is, is that we we've, we've arrived to this point here, where when a game sells over a million copies and hasn't made its money back, we're in a bad spot. The game industry is in a terrible place right now. Just absolutely terrible place and arguing why games are good or should remain locked into one area one one console one store is is insanity at this point because as we all know rebirth isn't selling it's probably not selling bad but it's it's not selling as much as remake for various reasons and you know we just got word how alan wake 2 has not made its money back yet that's on xbox and playstation and Epic Game Store. And I think that's the real key takeaway there, too, is that, like, it's not even just throw everything on PC anyhow, any way you can. The reality is, is you got to need, if you're going to be on PC, be on everything you can. Yeah. You know, be on EGS if you want. Be on, you know, GOG. Be on Steam, especially. And and, and a lot of people argue, like, we are giving a monopoly to Steam. And it's like, whatever, at this point, you know, Put it on whatever you want. You make your own launcher. Ubisoft and EA did, and it's annoying, but like they exist. But it's like it does suck. Yeah. The the point is, is that we got to a point where Spider Man Two sold like ten million copies in a month, right? And it's profitable. But when we saw the leak come out, you know that when Insomnia got hacked, and then you saw how much they had to sell to to break even, right? And then. Beyond the leaks, they laid off staff at the start of this year from Insomniac. You're staring at a very unhealthy industry right now. Well, right. Like, so, like, getting healthy. Right. So, sitting here saying that, like, okay, well, you should, we need to have exclusive. No, you don't, because if being successful doesn't guarantee people's livelihoods, you got to start putting things on everything. Like if selling a million copies of something isn't good enough anymore, then you got to put it on everything. We need to like drop it. Cause here's the thing. I'm going to go right into this. The mentality 
of having a, a console exclusive a mentality of you buy the PlayStation for PlayStation games, you buy the Xbox for Xbox games, you buy the Nintendo Switch for Nintendo Switch. That mentality is 50 years plus old business marketing uh, strategy, like mentality. Right. The mentality of buying a console and only playing those games made for that console on that console exclusively, that is a 1970s business tactic. Right. I, I, something that's really interesting about that is like the business community or, or rather like if I marketing and and um and like business philosophy i guess would be it has mm -hmm. been has looked at that as outdated for at minimum 20 years like there was it, in the mobile space even that has been dead for years mm -hmm. you know what i mean uh i don't know why the 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 gaming industry has been so slow. Well, actually, I do sort of know what it is. It's it's really is that the gaming industry has been dominated by Japanese companies for the last 30 plus years, really. Right. Um, and they've sort of set the standard for how to approach, um, you know, the gaming customer, say, or gamers in general. Um, and and they are notorious for not changing. Uh, they don't they don't like right. They don't like, like to change a thing that's even broken. Really. Well, yeah. well, the idea that you have this 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 little walled garden again. This comes from the seventies. This comes from the era of Atari and 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 Odyssey. Because all right. the way back to the very first video game system, the Magnavox Odyssey and the Odyssey Two, you know, by association, Magnavox wanted people to sell the Odyssey. They would told people in Sears, if you remember that. Uh, it's a graveyard of a uh, graveyard of companies. They told them, when you sell this product, tell them it only works on Magnavox TVs. Like they would right. even they, they were even lying. And and then and you had people at the time who were like, we'll make a video game system if we make it exclusive to our television sets. They wanted their television sets to literally have feature. You know, like oh, what's wrong with that? Have features. I'm like. Imagine yeah, accessories that are imagine. Okay, well, I'm trying to you know to, to make this modern. Okay, imagine you buy a smart TV or a brand new TV, right? And Netflix can only play on Samsungs, and Disney Plus can only play on LGs, right? And Peacock can only stream on Sony Bravias or, or OLEDs, right? That is literally the what they wanted. That is the world in which these companies thought and wanted things to be from the 1970s that's where the 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 fairchild channel f the first video game system with with cartridges same deal they wanted it to only play on their product you know the well, idea that's like you're gonna buy our product you're gonna get into our ecosystem and then we are going to obsolete the other guy there's something really funny here because uh, uh 10 10 years ago there was a major push um especially in tech to get away from physical products mm -hmm. and into software because software is infinitely scalable and uh six years ago i was talking to a cmo and i was saying like there's going to be a swing back to physical product because people no longer trust software software is ambiguous and you know software should be on everything so your physical product is going to be where investors are going to want to put their money now at the time that was a mildly controversial take um but now you can sort of see that like everybody's swinging back toward physical product and this is always happening it's always pendulum um you know and and i by the way I, that was not my that was not my original thought like i was reading plenty of much smarter people saying that <laughs> um so i don't want to pretend like i am a prophet <laughs> i'm not but um, I think the gaming industry has lagged behind those trends for ages. And I think Microsoft specifically has always been at the forefront of those trends. But its, right, gaming, division, it's gaming division has tried to stay lockstep with the industry that it's in because they want to look maybe legitimate. Uh, or they yeah. want to look legitimate yeah. to gamers. And it's like, is, uh, yeah, well, they are saying we're a software first company. They always, they've always said that. that. They've always been that. Um, and so now you have 
the gaming industry is finally realizing like well they've known for decades that hardware doesn't make them any money unless you're nintendo nintendo makes money on hardware yes you're going to comment that i know that but the hardware isn't necessarily where they make the profit because again software is infinitely scalable it only costs you the one thing one time and then you can just keep right. reselling it a copy of it um that's very dumbed down but you get it we're now coming to a point where like people realize even further that if you're limiting software that is infinitely scalable to a piece of hardware that in reality is no longer any different the architecture of a ps5 versus the architecture of an xbox versus the architecture of a pc yes there are differences but the components are no longer custom built specifically for yeah. a ps5 you're not no using longer... proprietary stuff anymore right and you're all you're doing by doing that is making it far more expensive to develop specifically for the ps5 so now the name of the game is you're making hardware that locks people into your ecosystem yes but your software should not be locked into the ecosystem your marketing is now going to be targeted at getting people to identify with buying a PlayStation. Mm -hmm. But your games, that's whatever other incentive you get. If you buy a PS5 and you buy the game on PS5, it's a little bit cheaper or there's extra tidbits or a DLC, like shit like that. You're going to see that stuff happen. But you're still able to buy that game. Mm -hmm on other consoles on other because software is infinitely scalable so you're just basically uh th you're burning money by not putting it everywhere and i think microsoft has wanted to do this forever which is why we've noticed you know we being like gamers in general have noticed especially since phil spencer came in that they have talked more and more about like yeah software being what they want to do well, I think there's more and more of that. The problem really with a lot of these companies have is that, and Phil's talked about it, and it's kind of like it sucks in a way because they, they, they have, we have to grow. We're not growing. We're stagnating. And it's like, I think growing is, 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 is terrible. I think the idea that there has to be infinite growth is, is awful. What? But that's not, there's nothing they can do about that because they're all publicly traded companies. Every one of these companies are public. You know who's not publicly traded? Valve. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> uh, but also, 20, 20, that's a 25 year old, yeah, exactly 25 year old philosophy is that uh, market capture or whatever market and growth is is the best thing that's why you get like open door which uh has never actually earned a profit but is somehow worth billions it's just it controls so much of the market yeah but who cares if they're not making any money yeah yeah that's so, not... i mean i i think infinite growth is terrible but it is true that that's there's investors there's there's kind of no way around this right now i mean like the real right. answer here is that is if is if is if these companies could get off this 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 need for infinite growth, that's not going to happen. Um, but I mean, that's kind of like almost like a different. It's almost like a different ball of wax there, though. It's just that even without the infinite growth, let's 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 forget the infinite growth aspect of it. Let's just look at like what it costs, because games are not cheap anymore. The the manpower, the man hours, the the you know everything that goes into de oh. development costs. Look at how much marketing has increased in cost just to get people's eyeballs. Right, which I think is, I don't think is personally, I think I think marketing. Well, yeah, yeah, we've talked about this in the past where it's like you, you personally feel like marketing is bullshit. And I would say that marketing is bloated now. Yeah, uh, I, I just don't think they need to be spending that money and then like putting the eye, because like, again, like Spider-Man was a great example where they were spending like $200 million right. or whatever on marketing. And I'm like, why? It's Spider-Man 2. Well, I, PlayStation. I think, what you don't have to say anything more. I think in their mind, it's like the more they're trying to make as many eyeballs see it and remember it because right. they think it sells itself, which in a lot of ways it does. It really um, does. But how do you need to spend the amount of money that you could you could fund ten to fifteen games entirely? I off don't, of, off of yeah. just telling people there's a Spider Man two on PlayStation five. I mean, I'm by no means a thought leader, um, but I do think that there is a legitimate argument for saying that marketing in general, not just in gaming, but everywhere, is it's heading for a reset. Um, you know, you're you're seeing like marketing teams everywhere get like more and more worried about things like AI because most people don't understand AI, and that's why they're uh -huh. you know pushing it for everything. But you're 
you're talking about like these marketing budgets are exploding because they're using again 50 year old ideas about carpet bombing and like what yeah. needs to be advertised like I, i'm not saying all gamers because i don't actually know the percentage of it but like the vast majority of gamers don't watch cable tv yeah how much of your marketing budget goes towards cable tv for games now again this is just an example to talk about like that's a bloat you don't need to spend money on cable tv anymore because no gamer whether or not yeah okay spider-man oh god yeah very very few very few of your eyes are going on to that that right you know cable television and cable advertising is still one of the most expensive way it's like per eyeball is still one of the most expensive places to spend ad spend uh same with billboards billboards are uh actually it turns out one of the most effective ways to uh to sp- mm-hmm. do ad spend it's for the amount of people that will see it uh but for a video game is a billboard the best way to get those eyeballs like is it is it the best like if i'm driving to and from where if i'm a gamer there's very little chance that I'm going to see a billboard and that's going to be the first I hear of the game. It might, there's an argument for saying the billboards are for like reminding you, keeping a top. I would put more faith in a billboard than I would a TV commercial. Right. I, 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 yeah, I, I just think that there's a lot of bloat in marketing budgets right now that like some CMO, well, The real reason CMOs don't want to look at these things is that they don't want in any way, shape, or form to cut their own budget. Uh, Once you cut your budget, you're never getting it back. Right. Um, And, you know, especially in the larger companies, uh, CMO, uh, the way they get that better CMO position, the way they move to a better company or get a raise is by how big is their team and how big is their budget. Well, there's apparently too funny so enough. There's some panic attack that happened earlier this year. I heard about it in, within the industry because there was a there was an analysis done, um, and the vast major and the majority of people playing video games, and a lot of this was the younger generation, were playing video games that were six years old or older. Right, right which means all that money you spent on marketing meant nothing. Right. So the vast majority of people playing video games like online right now are playing Fortnite and Minecraft, you know, and and pick your poison of any game that's at, you know, six years old or older. Yeah, which we've talked about before, but it's still like which apparently, shocking, which apparently freaked them out. And this kind of goes a right. little bit too into um, freaked me the fuck out. Attach rates and why again, why exclusivity is so, so flipping stupid at this point right. in time. Um because a lot of people, when when you know, and I've had this argument over and over and over again about about how Rebirth was exclusive to PS5. It's exclusive. There's well, of course, it's it's on PS5. There's not. As many. I'm like, there are 55 million PS5s that have been sold when Rebirth came out. 55 million. That was that is an insane amount. Like you have to understand, like that's more than than way more than the original Xbox sold. That's that's more than GameCube, more than N sixty four. It's close to Super NES lifetime sales worldwide. Like fifty five million amount, yeah. is is a lot. It is selling faster right now than the PS four sold barely, but whatever. So I'm like, this is not an issue of people can't find PS fives. This is an issue of people are not buying games on their PS five. And I think this 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 goes a little bit too into what are people doing on their video games? They're playing Fortnite and Minecraft and other mm-hmm. free to play games. A big one is Genshin, uh, because that company, Miyaho, who does Genshin Impact, Honkai Star Rail, just have Zenless Zone Zero coming out, right? Mm-hmm. They're pro- they're a private company and they're worth billions now. And the thing about them is that's funny, is that they just kind of keep trucking along on their one game. And they don't even have to really do they, they're not they're not like they're not like in this crazy position where like Fortnite kind of it, as big as it is, it cost it, it has to constantly be releasing new content, changing the map, changing the weapons, changing yeah. you know, gameplay features, constantly, 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 constantly has to be showing, you know, new new uh, collaborations. Genshin doesn't have any of that. Genshin doesn't need any of that. Genshin mm-hmm. is not beholden to any they're not publicly traded and they're not beholden to any other massive shareholder of their company. 
Right, but they're not they're not updating the game at all, and it's still oh, absolutely they're oh, absolutely okay. updating the game. At okay, all. You, they have like industry best animation. Like I I, right. I saw just a, a clip. I think it was either Honkai or Zenla Zone Zero, and I was just flabbergasted at how amazing the animation was. I'm like, how the fuck is this animation so good? I'm like, because they have infinite budget, because none of their money is is tied up in in the shareholder thing. Like when they had when they launched Genshin Impact at the end of that year. They made so much money. We talked about how they made so much money immediately. Right. The CEO of the company went and he bought everyone on his staff 30 90s PS5s and Series Xs. Okay. He's like, I just have all this money. And there was like a picture he posted online of this fucking truckload in their in their lobby of their of their office. Where it's like all these PS5s and 3090s. And he's like, whatever, here you go. Here you guys go. I'm like, no, this is like, uh this is a random aside, but it's very, it's exactly in that vein. And it's something that got said to me yesterday where I was just like, oh, well, that's never like that never happens. This guy yesterday, my wife and I were in a hotel having like the hotel breakfast thing near us was talking about how he got to take two years off. And it was like, oh, why did you get to take two years off? And he was like, oh, uh, I worked for a travel company, like a timeshare company. And, uh, um, I'm blanking on the. It was a big Radisson. Radisson just bought their company for three billion dollars or some shit, <laughs> like some insane amount. Yeah, and uh, closed them down because they were a competitor. And their boss shows up like the very next day in a Rolls Royce, walks in, and everybody's like, "Oh, he, he walks in, he goes, you 'You're all fired.'" And they're like, "Oh, what the fuck?" He goes, "But don't worry, I'm giving each of you two years' pay." Because he became a billionaire overnight because it was a private company. So he gave everyone in his company two years worth of pay. <laughs> and so they were they all just took two years off. And it's like, uh, yeah, that doesn't happen. Like, you know, if somebody bought, say, if somebody bought PlayStation off of Sony, everyone's getting laid off and it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you're exactly. not getting you might get severance, but you're not getting two years worth of your salary and shit. It's like private companies, I wonder if there's like nowadays, if you start a private company, the whole goal is to eventually sell it. Right. Know, it's public and stuff. And it's like, I can't think of a sadder, you know, turn of events where it's like nobody builds anything anymore with the intention of like building it. They but build they kinda, it with the intention of selling it. Right. Yes. That's what most people do. But there are, again, Miho is just... Yeah. There's One. these, there are these young, you know, young weebs from China are like, I'm going to make this game and I'm going to do it. And, 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 oh, oh shit. Like I'm going to make the game. I want to play. I want other people want to play. He knows there's an audience. Yeah. Hyper successful. What does he do? He just spends money. He spends his money on his, you know, on his employees. He spends it on his product. Right. And then his product gets bigger and bigger because of it. And then he gets more money and then he spends more of it in and then he gets more money and then he puts it in and then he gets more. It's like this. It's like this amazing thing where business is just operating as it should be, <laughs> right? It, it's uh, it's like everything they promised you is how economics work. Uh, you know, it's like, oh yeah, yeah. If you if you let a person keep more of their money, they'll spend it and reinvest it. That is uh, so true. I guess everywhere outside of corporate America, <laughs> they don't <laughs> they don't reinvest in their teams at all in corporate. Like before the pandemic happened, uh, what was the rate of getting a pay raise? So it was like insane. The only way you got pay raises is if you jump jobs, right? Yeah. Everyone, everyone jumped, I mean, people still do, but like the but anyways, like the idea here is that like people buying these PS fives, especially in Japan, because there were some people saying like people were buying PS fives in Japan and reselling them to to China, which I don't know how much I don't know how much that would account for. I doubt it's millions, but people even in Japan who have bought the PS five, they're just playing Apex Legends on it apparently. And Genshin. Yeah, like, well, because this also goes to the reason why consoles um, do well for the last 10 years, in my opinion. Anyway, it's not because of exclusive games. It's because consoles are the most convenient way to game. Right. When I, so I don't think that people have this weird idea that if you t if, if consoles took away their exclusivity, you, you saw it happen to Xbox. And I'm like, Xbox killed itself. 10 years ago, 10, 11 years ago, Xbox killed itself with with its the messaging on the Xbox One. Yeah, by like, trying to tighten the screws on you, really. Like, by trying to lock you in further to Xbox, they killed themselves. Right. Like, that was because, if you remember, when Xbox One was launching, 
uh, stuff was not launching day and date on PC at the time with them and stuff. Right. Like they, they were, they were trying to go even harder wall. Do they wanted you to be a walled garden and connected to the internet at all times? Yeah. They wanted, they wanted to monopolize all of your media, all of your entertainment. They wanted yeah. you to be account locked, you know, and system yeah. locked and, and, and you have to buy a connect and you, all this other horse crap. So the thing is, it to, if if Sony and and the thing is, we saw it with Helldivers already. Like, if Sony just stopped with the exclusivity crap, people are like, oh, people will stop buying PS5s. Which, who cares? First of all, like at the end of the day, does it really even matter? And then second of all, I don't even know if that's necessarily true because people, again, they are buying these consoles, and the attach rate is so low on 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 PlayStation and whatever. And you're like, well, what? and I was sitting there because that's where I'm really looking here. I'm like, okay. Hardware is selling is selling really good. Well, why is the software? Why does the attach ratio seem to be kind of awkward for PS5? Because they're playing Genshin, because they're playing Apex, because they're playing Fortnite, because they're, they're playing... watching Netflix. <laughs> like they're, they're, just, they're just watching streaming services on it. Like yeah, like I've got a lot of uh, like especially industry for. Uh, uh, I had every production company that I had worked at for like almost a two year period uh, had like an Xbox in the break room or a PlayStation in the break room. And it would be used for like watching, uh, you know, Netflix or whatever during a break. The one I worked at, they played games, they played Madden on it. Right. And it's like, Oh, okay. Well, that's weird. You see them in offices all the time now, but it's not for gaming. It's as a media box. How many people do we know that have, a PlayStation 4 or a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox, and they don't own any games. Like, it's just used... So they don't own and, and, and to get even further here, because I bought a PlayStation 5. I bought it on launch day. I've had it since yeah. day one. I've had my PS5. And I am sitting here right now thinking, can, like, it was poised to me by our, by our friend, Noe, where I'm like, this might just be the last PlayStation I buy. It might be... It might be because if I look at my PlayStation 5 and I think about what are, and I've gotten a lot of good use out of it, don't get me wrong, but what is on that PlayStation 5 that I cannot play on my PC and won't ever be able to play on my PC? Like there's a few games right now, like say Rebirth and, and maybe, you know, um, say Spider-Man 2. I can't play it on PC yet, but like eventually all those games did come are coming to be returnal came to pc ratchet clank came to right. pc horizon 2 came to pc i don't know if Ra god of war ragnarok's on pc yet but it will be because the first one was rebirth will be like it only comes down to like okay well i'm buying it ps5 to play first and i don't mind a staggered release as much but like hell divers 2 is you know the ultimate example of like, okay, well, this was a multiplayer game that released day and date on both PC and PlayStation, and it became one of their top 10 most profitable games ever, yeah. which it would not have been if it didn't have both. It needed both. You take away PS5 or PC from Helldivers 2, it's no longer, you know, it's not even in the top 20. You put them together, now it's number seven, right? Yeah. Now no, I'm trying to kill the goodwill that all yeah. of this recording by requiring a PSN login because fuck you, Sony. Um they but, they want you they wanna be able to sell your information, man. Like, absolute absolute horseshit. Hey, let me let me uh let me just read this to you. Countries that cannot make a PlayStation Network account. Uh so if you are playing Helldivers 2 on PC um and you live in one of these countries you will no longer be able to play hell divers 2 in a month afghanistan albania algeria andorra angola antigua barbuda armenia as uh, azerbaijan uh, bahamas bangladesh barbados belarus Bel belize benin bhutan bosnia Zgroba, botswana brunel burkana faso burundi cambodia cameroon cape verde central african republic chad comoros democratic republic of the congo republic of the congo Djibouti, basically Min almost all of africa dominican republic east timor egypt equatorial guinea uh, I, I could go on and on and on and on and on, you know, the Philippines, Sri Lanka, Sudan, you know, uh, Sierra Leone, Solomon Islands, uh, all, all of all of the Caribbean, you know, all the Caribbean, all pretty much almost all of Africa, Morocco, Mozambique, Myanmar, uh, Namibia, like well, Myanmar's got bigger problems. <laughs> sure. I don't, you know, I don't think they're worried. About Maldives, you know, it just I, I could go on and on and on and on and on Guyana, like. 
you know, Haiti, Jamaica, Peru. Well, okay, not Peru. Um, I'm about to and Haiti, there. Haiti got other problems. They're probably. No, I, I get this. I get this. I, but like, that's not even the full list. That 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 was a that was a. Uh, I gave up just going through that holes, but like you, you get the idea. Sony just decided, ah, we're just going to lock people out. Why? Because we need a PlayStation. They are literally, we don't have a walled garden. Put a walled garden on our hell divers too. Yeah. And you made a good point earlier when I was expressing frustration at this, where you were like, uh, you know, it, this isn't hell divers doing this. This is, and this isn't something that is, is technically new. It's something that got dropped at the beginning of launch. Yeah, uh, because it was causing problems, and now they're bringing it back. And what is it doing? It's causing more problems. Like it, it's it's like you don't want money, right? Well, it's like <laughs> I think it's the idea because they want they want analytics, they want people in their PlayStation Network ecosystem. Right? They want to sell to you. They want to track your data, and it's like fuck you sony fuck all of these people all of them i'm not leaving microsoft and nintendo out of this in any way shape or form but like in particular right now as of today f you sony uh because this 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 greedy i need to collect data i need to be able to market to you easier i need you i need to have an email that i can spam you with i need to have all this yeah. crap um just to play my game and it's like or or you could have just sold me the game and let us be happy with that but you right. can't ever you they can never just be happy with that and it'll never go back that way it's never going to go back it's and the reason yeah. and the reason say and well let's, to, to pivot back to alan wake 2 why is alan wake 2 only selling um 1.3 million my xenoblade sells better than alan wake 2 let's put that into into consideration here my xeno my xenoblade 3 sold more copies faster than alan wake 2 did and yeah. that thing was on on playstation xbox and egs there's that last part egs now i get it epic funded the game so it's a bayonetta 2 situation right so i don't want to like say like oh f epic you know like oh terrible epic how are they holding this game back epic did fund the game but epic put a guillotine over that game's neck because yeah. now they basically said well this is the end of the franchise hey we we charitably magnanimously you know uh gracefully gave you the money to make alan wake 2 and you disappointed us so now you're dead forever. Why? Because Epic won't put the game on Steam because Epic is being a pissant about the fact that Steam would get a 30% cut and they don't like that fact. Even though, you know, like we, they offer a better cut on Epic Game Store. We're so much better than them. But here's the thing. People don't want to download your damn launcher. Yeah, like it's crap. Like, okay, is is making 70% of the sales of the game such a terrible thing? No, you have to make 100% of it on your launcher only. But all these millions, I mean millions of potential customers on Steam, you're just leaving that money on the table because you don't want to make 70% of the sale you want to make a hundred percent of the sale and then you're going to throw it back on remedy and say well you know we we were we were nice we were the nice guys we gave you the money to make your dream project you made it and it didn't sell so i guess you don't have an audience so now you put this guillotine over the head of your franchise by saying like the audience isn't there man we we funded it we advertised it you know we had jeff Keeley practically sucking your dick off on stage at the game awards yeah like, you won a shitload of awards you got a lot of attention you know like i'm yeah. sorry you don't have an audience we proved it no you didn't prove it you didn't really like, you you only proved that the people at epic game store is a small and b not interested in that one game and this is the argument I always turn around and put on Nintendo because people are like, well, it takes away the point of Nintendo. F off. Most of Nintendo's franchises outside of the Mario, Zelda, Animal Crossing, they're selling, like, again, they're selling to, like, 2% of the audience, maybe 4% at best. Metroid Dread plateaued at 3 million, right? Fire Emblem was interesting because three houses, right place, right time. You know, came yeah, out at the yeah. right time. Sells really well. The follow-up Fire Emblem and Gage, which people say isn't as good, sells a fourth, a fourth of Three Houses. Three Houses is more of a fluke. Let's like let's get that. But even at a, even at a fluke, Three Houses is selling about three percent of the Switch user base, and Fire Emblem and Gage is selling to 0.75. Of the it, user ma base. it makes me wonder, like, if they released a new Animal Crossing right now. 
because that's another one that like hit right place, right time. Right. It was it was the cozy blanket of games right at the. I still say it would sell at least you know ten million. You know maybe less, maybe maybe under ten. It wouldn't sell like you know thirty million or whatever that that the the the, the current one did, but it would still sell yeah. very 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 good. Here, but my point is, is that like Bayonetta two and three. And 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 Fire Emblem and Xenoblade and Astral Chain, these would all make make ban, you know make money on Steam. They would make good money on Steam. There's a lot of people who bought Bayonetta one on Steam. There's a lot yeah. of people who play like Rising on Steam. There's a lot of people who love character Devil May Cry, love these games on Steam, play them on Steam. You know, there's a lot of people who would play them on Steam. I would in in, in you know um, I think he's a listener. Legato was telling me he's like yeah, but I don't think it's gonna be like it's not gonna like double the triple the sales i'm like i don't know man like a strategy rpg on pc that seems like a that seems like a very much like yeah. a, a big big win like a big rp Baldur's gate skyrim you put xenoblade on pc you think you know there wouldn't be a huge flocking of of pc gamers who are like you know i've never really been in nintendo stuff but you know that xenoblade look kind of cool let me check it out i would do so the thing is is like nintendo's so responsible for a lot of like I would say probably at least half, but more of the cultural touch points for gamers mm -hmm. that like, I don't know if there's anybody out there that like, maybe they never bought a Nintendo switch, but like nobody out there is like, Oh, I've never been into Nintendo stuff, but I'll give it a try. No, everybody out there that hasn't owned a Nintendo switch will be like, hell yeah, I can finally try this game, whatever that game might be. Yeah. There's a game on switch for sure that a PC player. Well, cause here's the try. thing. It's yeah. like, this does offer the switch offers a unique you know thing because it's a portal yeah. it's a hybrid console which i think is a great thing i think it's a wonderful thing that they and i think it's they were smart to pivot this direction it's called but here's the usp a unique selling point <laughs> right so this is over this is an oled which means it's over 300 dollars, and that's not right. even with a game so there I, I guarantee you there's a ton of, and like pc gamers are used to spending big money on upgrades sure but i mean like they only have to do it every 10 years <laughs> Well, here's the thing. I mean, OLED is over 300 bucks, and then you're going to spend 60 on a game 70 if it's Tears of the Kingdom. Um, so you're looking at $400. You're looking, if I want to play, if someone on PC who, who spent a lot of time and money into the building their PC and has access to thousands, if not millions, of video games on their PC, sees a Nintendo game, even if it's like, again, a Bayonetta 2, 3, Astral Chain, uh, Fire Emblem, Xenoblade, they look at that and go, that's really cool. I'd like to play that. I'd have to spend four hundred dollars to play one of those games. Then it's going to go up to like four fifty, four sixty, five hundred if I wanted to play two. Yeah. So if I wanted to play two of those games, I'd have to drop a half a grand just to play two of those. Well, you're again, you're looking at a minimum unless he buys a Switch Lite for 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 like two hundred dollars, and then he buys a game for like to, for for sixty, and then the, with the tax, it's close to three hundred. You're looking at three to four hundred dollars for a person who has a pc to play one game they might be interested on it but imagine if they put that shit on steam even if it was a staggered release you know even if it was a year later or two years later or maybe when the switch 2 comes out they just start putting their old switch backlog on steam right. because you know the well the switch isn't even like it's not even part of our main portfolio anymore or whatever right i have just started putting that on steam uh all these pc players i think you i think you would get millions of sales but nintendo is like that's going to devalue our brand i which maybe I think i think that's a dinosaur ass mentality because here's the thing the more the older gen z gets the older the gen alphas get the more and more stupid that's going to sound because gen z and gen alpha they have shown over and over in every marketing, re every research, every analysis, they don't care. care. They yeah. don't care. They are not tech bros. They don't care. They they care more about if they're how can my phone run it? Great. Don't care. Yeah. Oh, but it but it runs. Don't care. They don't yeah, care they don't, how poorly it runs. Bad. Yeah. They don't care how poorly it runs. They don't care. I mean, all they care about is just like, oh, can I play Fortnite on it? Because play my does, does my phone get it? Does my computer get it? Gen so, Alpha is interesting because they're like in that 12 to 14 range, right? The oldest of Gen Alpha is like in that range where like you'd think that they would uh, that they would care more about like because their parents would be the ones buying like they have to beg for it. But like, no, like we again, 
we have a friend whose kid, like, it's a 99 cent game on mobile, so they'll just buy it, play it for an hour, and then whatever, they never touch it again. Yeah, they go back to Fortnite and Minecraft. Right, that's their mentality. Accessibility is all that matters to them. Um, now, granted, I, you know, Gen Z is is different. They're, they they are literally like the Gen, they're the Gen X of the next, you know, thirty years. Well, I think there's like. also, but I think there's another. I think there's crossover here too with the older crowd too, right? Because if you're an older, if you're an old fart like us. Or like me, more specifically. I'm a young, beautiful man. Young boy man. If you're an old I'm fart lucky. like me, let's say you're an old fart like me. Let's say you you like video games, but you're not into video games all the time. You know, you 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 may or may not have a PS5. You may or may not have a Switch. Probably have a Switch. Everyone has a Switch. But here's the thing. Let's say you don't have a Switch. Let's just say like you went, you got a job, you got a wife, you got a kids, you know, whatever, right? You got a you kids. Know what, you got a kids. You know you you know you you know what you do have. You know you absolutely have a fucking PC. I would say most people, yeah. You have a PC. You have a PC. You probably have some sort of decent PC. And again, like the games Nintendo makes could run on my foot. Um, yeah. You have a PC. If you don't have, if you were on, oh, cool, this game that I've been kind of interested in, it's on Steam. Great. I have a PC. I'll play it on my Steam account. Oh, you see a commercial, you see a billboard, you see, you know, anything else we talk about in marketing for, say, new game. Oh, what's that on? Oh, Switch. I don't have Switch. How much is that going to cost? $400 buying to get that oh, that, well. that product. Eh. Oh, well. Well, it's also like, uh, this is another thing if you're talking about accessing the parental market. Um, parents, if they bought a Switch, kid's going to have that Switch. Yeah. Like, the kid's going to be on that Switch the whole time. You know, I, again, this is another thing we know from friends who like their switch is their kids switch now, but like their work PC or the PC that they use for doing the work is probably powerful enough to play a Nintendo game in a lot of cases. And they're not going to have to share that with their kid. And that is that is an untapped market. Like, again, we have it's anecdotal, but we have direct evidence of friends. Who well, that's like, what I'm saying is like the, the, the millennials and older, the Gen Xers, yeah. they, they don't have time and see no point in investing maybe in a new video game system. But if it's like, you make that super easy and convenient for them to just buy it on PC, I get money on the table. And, and you know, the whole point of all this is, is that games are not making game. The industry is not healthy. Everyone's getting everyone's getting laid off. No one's making money, you know, or, or they are making money, but it's not meaning anything because people are still getting fired. The most the most successful people are still getting laid off. We can't sit here and be like, hey, make a game that's as passionately and lovingly created as Alan Wake 2 and Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth and then have it to be a complete sale, like not even a clue, just a sales disappointment where it takes months and months to make back its money. That's a problem. Well, that's not. That's also something that has to change in the industry too. Where like their metrics for success, neither of those games failed necessarily. Well, Alan Wake Two hasn't completely made its money back, but like Rebirth hasn't failed. It's just not as much of a success as they wanted. Sure, like they're talking about it like it like it's it's dying or like it died on a ride like it like it's DOA like it it. It is a success. It made its money back. It's it's doing perfect fine. It's just not doing as well as they wanted. Like I think that's a but there's but but in, in rebirth would be my point is too is that these games oh, would, would be yeah, they would be yeah. They would be if they stopped taking I mean, I don't care what the short term is, because here's the thing. Here's the real thing. Like first for rebirth in particular, and this actually applies to Alan Wake as well. When you take that money from Epic or you take that money from Sony. You've got your game funded. You didn't lose money on it. Someone else paid for it, right? Yeah. So it's not a loss. It wasn't a loss, and it, and it, and it was popular enough. It made it made decent sales, right? Pretty good. Here's the problem: you've you have actually done the opposite of what Daddy Nintendo thinks, which is you've actually hurt that brand because by not putting that brand everywhere where people can see and hmm. buy it, you've now shrunk. It's potential audience. Like if you look at the if you look at the sales in Japan, in the UK, in the US of every Final Fantasy going all the way back to like say 13, 
It's just down, 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 downward, just complete, utter downward trend. Right. You know, of sales. Why? And the only bump is 15. And 13 and 15 were both multi platform games at launch. Interesting. And then they went exclusive and then it went down and then it really started to dip. Yeah. I mean, you definitely. I don't think there's anybody that would deny that, you know, ecosystems were kind of the buzz for years. You know, I don't, I don't know if, yeah, definitely like having a locked in ecosystem is the reason why steam did as well as it did. Right. Uh, Or, well, I shouldn't say that steam did as well as it did because they were the first ones to make it easy to buy games on PC. Uh, but I mean that the reason like Epic Game Store exists because they looked at Steam and they're like, oh, the reason Steam is doing well is because they have a locked in audience. It's not entirely the truth, but it is kind of like the same with like the reason why there's so many streaming services now. They yeah. all want to have their own locked in captive audience. Um, everyone's learning this lesson now. All of them are. You're gonna get well, bundles. You're gonna get all that. Thing. Shit. Yeah. Steam was where the ball was going. So they were there right. to catch it. Everyone else is just trying to, to, to catch up to them. But like, yeah, someone had an amazing comment on my rebirth sales video where he's like, um, someone made an, uh, he was quoting another YouTuber who said, here's re you know, imagine rebirth is at the end of a hallway. Right. And you look at it, rebirth, you're like, I want rebirth. And as you as you move towards rebirth, a bunch of doors close in front of it. Every door is locked, and each lock represents something. Rebirth is out. PS5 exclusive. Oh, I don't have a PS5. That's a locked door. You know, rebirth is a sequel, meaning you have to play the second, you know, the first game to, to understand the second. Oh, that's a locked door. You know, rebirth is it all these things, just sort of all the things compiling on it. But I thought it was interesting where it was like, yeah, it was, you know. It was a game that was on a, on a was a easy was originally PS4 exclusive, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of like, but now it's not. Now you literally jumped from one console exclusivity to another, and then they did bring it out on PC. Remake has been on PC, it's been on each, and it's been on Steam. So now everyone who played it on EGS and Steam, oh well, I can't play Rebirth right now unless I yeah, go buy a PS5, wait. yeah, or I gotta wait. I can't even go get a cheap PS4. It's not even on PS4 anymore. All these things just locked it down. And what's that doing? What's in, 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 and we see what we literally have seen what that's done for its sales. And we're seeing what it's doing for the brand overall. Because here's the, here's the real truth here. Final Fantasy as a brand is not growing. It hasn't been. Yeah, it's, like, been, it's been stagnant for years. 15 was the last time it really kind of blew up. Um, and strangely enough, on, on a dollar to dollar basis, 15 made the most money in in America than any Final Fantasy. Granted, there's you know, there's inflation in there, and then there's just but also the fact that the PC audience jumped on that game. Well, it was also the first Final Fantasy in how like a decade. <laughs> yeah. Like it had anticipation on it. Well, it had anticipation on it, you know, it also had it it, it was on everything. Yeah. That's the I other know. thing it had. Well, you know, you compare 15 to 16 and 16 had a pretty steep drop off after a few weeks, right? Like yeah. it fails and, um, you know, and a lot of people would say like, oh, it's because 16 isn't good. But 16 was a pretty good game. Like there were but, problems but with guess it. Guess what? It's exclusive. Right. It's the exclusivity that made it's, the drop off. It's, it's not on, it's still not on PC yet. It's not helping the brand at all. Yeah. It's, because uh, and the, the younger crowd growing up, when you, when we were kids, the argument on the playground was Nintendo or Super Nintendo or Genesis. Mm-hmm. The argument was PlayStation or N sixty four, right? Kids yeah. on the you know what kids argue on the playground now? I got I got I got better skins in Fortnite than you. Oh, you didn't you didn't beat that battle pass in Fortnite? No, you're a loser. You don't have you don't have this cool you don't have this cool character in Fortnite. I have this cool character. It's not even, it's not even about this or that or whatever. Like maybe you could argue it's yeah. Android versus Apple, but it's not even it's barely even Android versus Apple. It's mostly just like I have Fortnite. What did you do in Fortnite? What did you do in Minecraft? They're on their phone. Yeah. Yeah, they're not it it is an interesting world to be going into for gaming. And again, we uh 
we talked about him earlier today, not on the podcast, but we talked about him. And it's like Matt Piscatella has like, you know, this is his job, right? He does insights into the industry, into the corporate side of it. And God, if you follow him on any of his social media, like the comments that he gets from people mad at him for literally just saying this is happening. <laughs> it's like it's like he's like the sun is shining and everybody is just hating on him because they think the sun is a PlayStation exclusive. You know, um, it, there's a weird tribalism that happens online that clearly does not exist anywhere else. And that's true about everything. But in gaming specifically, like the loudest PlayStation fanboys or Xbox fanboys or even Nintendogs, they don't that it doesn't translate to the real world. Like PlayStation is making decisions on exclusivity based on these vocal fanboys that like they don't they don't buy all your games. They're not they're not spending the money that you think they're spending. You need the average person who doesn't know what a play box is. What, right. what a and, and to to be Nintendo fair Nintendo station does. To, to be know? fair, like Spider Man two has like a twenty percent attach rate to the PS5. You know, God of War probably has a pretty good or close attach rate to it. But God of War is not exclusive to PS5, so I guess whatever. Both, yeah, but both also like extremely recognizable very recognizable right but but that even and again that kind of feeds a little bit into what i'm saying like final fantasy brands dying dude like we have this big beautiful gorgeous exclusive game to our platform and it's not selling anywhere near as good as spider-man 2 did why because final fantasy doesn't mean that much to gamers anymore well it also it's been unfairly, unfairly so unfairly so i wish yeah. it did no and i mean rebirth is excellent um you know I, I would i would go so far as to say rebirth is a triumph right um, yeah but the thing is is and and i think they've said it themselves uh you know who who was it that recently said like the problem with final fantasy right now is like they see the 16 and they go like oh do i have to play 15 games because the people you're talking to now aren't the people in the 90s who knew that square you know or squaresoft and and final fantasy was the prestige Right. They don't know that anymore. That doesn't exist anymore. We've aged out of that. Um, you're now competing for again Gen Alpha and Gen Z who don't necessarily pay attention. They're not steeped in gaming culture because gaming culture now culture now is mainstream culture. Like it's not, you know, but in, in the nineties and even the early two thousands, it was a niche where it became your identity. Gaming yeah. isn't your identity anymore. Gaming is just kind of like a, the, the fun hobby you do on the side. And and, right. lot, and here, honestly, like a lot of people are playing free to play games. But when, when not, we're talking free to play games, because people say oh, free to play ruined everything, mobile ruined everything. Here's the thing. Fortnite is a legitimately well put together game. Sure. There's a lot of free play like, games that are well put the, together. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Minecraft is a well put together game. Apex is a well put together game. Uh, Genshin and, and, and Honkai Star Rail are well put cod is not a well put together game at all it's fall <laughs> it's fallen apart is all i'm gonna say yeah okay, but like when when we're talking about like the games that are people these these six-year-old plus games that people are mostly playing now they are very well put together games right and they're time sinks and they're getting continuous support right so I can't blame a kid who's sitting there and, and looks at this thing like, oh, here, you should play this exclusive game for PS5 that only plays on PS5 and only PS5. And it's $70 because Sony decided we needed to be spending $70 on all our games now. I don't blame a kid for going like, nah. Yeah. I'll just keep playing Fortnite and Minecraft and, uh, you know, you have a good day. And it is, all you know, that's something that we we don't think about too much is we've built a world where two things are true. Now uh, we've infantilized all media. Like media is becoming more and more infantilized to the point where like it's targeted very specifically at a PG audience. Yeah. But remains So as that PG audience grows, you used to be able to grow up into those other things. And final fantasy, for instance, used to be that grown up RPG. Right, you grew up into now. Hey, they tried to they right tried now. to go there with sixteen, right? I, but that's not the audience anymore. No. The audience now has been PG for the last twenty years. Like, 
yeah. we've been stuck in a, a we have infantilized the audience to the point where now any any concepts that are older it doesn't connect the same well, it's the not just thing? fun oh. yeah the, but the other thing is like we have also created silos in a sense where you're a Fortnite player instead of a cod player and they they have siloed their audiences in a way where yeah but they cater very in very specific ways to that audience so you are incentivized to never leave that mm -hmm. silo yeah it's not a walled garden they're not trying to they're just putting a lot of effort into incentivizing you to stay that's different than what consoles are doing and exclusivity does exclusivity doesn't incentivize you to stay it punishes you for leaving right yeah and that's a very big difference to what we're seeing and it's you know I, xbox for all the faults they have and they have lots and lots of x uh, of, of faults but like they're now looking at how to incentivize you to buy their software not how to penalize you for not having their hardware and right. that's that's the smarter way to go at least right now until there's like and, and the other thing about these these other games that that are you know trying to like keep you sucked into their time you know you know what they have in common some of the, the most popular play games you can play them on just about anything pretty much any, yeah they're optimized for everything phones pcs consoles you can play it on everything minecraft's mm -hmm. on everything fortnite's on everything genshin was supposed to be on switch and it never happened but like it's still on everything else including phones right so the, uh, the reality is is just kind of like ease of use i don't need to worry about if I do, I need what do I need to go spend a few hundred dollars to play this game in any capacity? No, no yeah, you don't. I, the phone you own, the PC you already have, will probably play it, and that's that is the money on the table that I think a lot of these companies are just not getting. And there's a lot of this like fighting from the top, and they've even gotten people like even their consumer base to argue for them on their behalf of why it's so important, you know, to to protect our our walled garden. I'm like, this is some 1970s crap. You know about like you need to you need to be like you you need to buy this product and only play this product and 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 you know get get fucked if you didn't buy it you know well that's that's something that like you know as a final thought here um i'm getting at that too where i'm like the people online that are most vocal about having their identity be connected to playstation or exclusives being the way of the future the way of always uh whether it's on twitch or it's on twitter or youtube or whatever uh, those people are, in the vast majority of cases, they're the minority. They mm -hmm. are the most vocal, but like, even even watching a YouTube video, eighty percent of the people that uh, that are watching, whether they agree with you or not, they're not going to comment ever, no matter how strongly they feel. They're not saying anything. They're just like they'll. They might be like, "Hey, fuck this guy and his opinion." They're not going to comment. They might not even have an account on YouTube, right? Those are the people that now are like where the money's at. Those are the people that you gotta like try and meet where they are. And you're right, they're on mobile, they're on you know PC, they're on like meeting them where they are will get you their money. Not meeting them, they're low effort in terms of like they don't want to work, they don't want to knock down barriers to get your game. Yeah, they don't want to have to unlock doors. Yeah, it, and you're talking about like one of the major three is the they're the only ones talking about it they're the only ones saying we're going to meet customers wherever they are if our games are good you're going to want to buy them on playstation you're going to want to buy them on steam or on you know pc or like they're the ones talking about meeting you where you are well i don't understand how it's it's mind-blowing to hear us saying like yes that is the future that's correct like sometimes uh, actually i think every time we've brought it up somebody has commented and been like oh there's no fucking way and it's like well <laughs> they're doing it i don't like i'm not saying anything that isn't it, it feels like common knowledge industry wise and like i'm not even steeped in the like i have i'm un completely opposite of you i am the more casual gamer in all ways like right. you have you have personal connections to the industry you did game journalism for a long time like i'm completely on the outside like and even i can see that this is the way the wind is blowing 
I don't know why this is like a this is a controversial exclusivity is dead. Exclusivity is dead, and, and I think the thing is like people don't want to feel. I think people maybe feel like if I you know I bought a console, so it's like saying exclusivity is dead is like saying it's like telling me I wasted my money. Right, you know, well, I don't want to feel good about my purchase, and it's like all video game systems are worth it. Yeah. Like if someone was saying, is it, is it worth it to buy any one of the, the Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft systems on the market right now? Yes. 100%. Yeah, you, you can't mess up. You, you it's 100%. currently worth it to get any of them. There's good any, stuff on all of them. Yeah. Any one of those systems is worth the money. Every single one of them is worth the money. What's not worth the money is for these publishers to lock a game down to one space and then literally put like, you know, the, the future of that franchise and that developer put their future, put their neck under a guillotine and say like, if you don't do really well on my one platform, you're getting axed, kiss your job. Goodbye. Kiss your livelihood. Goodbye. Kiss your franchise. Goodbye. Because it has to do super well in, in, in one, you know, on one thing, like I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take three wheels off your car and it has to win the fucking race. It's a, a really good example of this that, you know, if you want to see where this goes, all you have to do is look at the movie industry right now, where it's if you don't make a billion dollars, your franchise may be dead. If, if your movie doesn't absolutely murder it, that franchise might be dead. Is that where you want gaming to go? Because that's where gaming's going right now. Yeah, like that's where you no longer get variety the way we have variety right now. Yeah, and and even now, like we're, it's, I guess it wouldn't be the golden age, but we did just recently have a golden age of variety on the systems, and that will disappear if ex exclusivity continues. Yeah, because again, like exclusivity is basically like you know putting putting a car in the, in a race and taking wheels off it. <laughs> on that note <laughs> that's a good spot to end on that note we do have producers to thank again if you want to become a patron at any level please check out patreon.com slash games podcast due to the week with six thank you six and our producers for this episode are ziggy z lcl mayhem hockey kong 64 hyper viper 89 croy 35 screw nami much mutton chops johnson zyber knight and Knight. thank you so much and we'll catch you next time later dudes